Let's break down bridge. So come onto your back, set your feet up parallel and hips width apart. Your heels will be directly underneath your knees. And at first, we'll just start off with a neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Relax the chest open and shoulders back. And then from here, we'll talk first about the energetics and the cues in the lower body. First, we want to press or imprint the feet down into the floor. Two, we want to pull the heels back energetically towards our sits bones. And three, we want to squeeze our inner thighs. Not so much that you're going to knock the knees together. We still maintain parallel, but we're just starting to activate that inner thigh connection. You'll hear me call this magnetizing your inner thighs. So we've got the imprint, the heel pull, and the inner thigh magnet. So with these cues going on in the lower body, let's take our first bridge and we're just going to do a simple neutral pelvic press up to the top of our bridge. I've got my imprint, I've got my heel pull, I've got my inner thigh magnet. Now let's talk about the pelvis and the rest of the trunk. So with the pelvis, we want to have the tailbone reaching and the pubic bone zipping in order to be neutral. The tendency here is to end up sort of hanging out in an arch at the top of our bridge or sometimes going so far over that we're more in an arch. So we want to bring it to where we're neutral and where we can properly set up that pelvis. When you have the proper setup in the pelvis, you're going to feel that natural connection to the glutes and the hamstrings and the natural connection to your lower abdominals. If you're in the proper setup, those things will be there. You don't have to work so hard for it. Now, we also wanna make sure that the ribs are in the right place. So we wanna make sure that we're not letting the ribs shear or flare. We wanna draw the ribs in and down. So with this connection of the ribs down to the pelvis, combined with the pelvic connection to the ribs, we create this beautiful core position or this stability in our core to support our center and our spine. Now, we got to talk about the shoulders just as well. So we want to keep the shoulders back. So we relax and open the chest so the shoulders can relax back with the arms pressing down. Now, if we overpress the shoulders, again, we can throw out those ribs and then lose our connection from our upper body to our lower body. So press the shoulders back just enough while you still can maintain our rib connection and this waist cinch and the pelvic connection. So it's really a whole chain of events that's going on constantly to have just this simple bridge, right? So here we still haven't lost what's going on in our lower body. We're gonna breathe through this for just a little bit longer because even just holding a really good bridge is work and it's really good deep work. So taking time to make sure that even as you can hold these connections, you still can breathe. We wanna make sure the breath is fluid and nourishing on your next exhale you're just going to go ahead and you're just going to sit the hips right back down to the floor so i didn't arch to go down right i kept all of my connections i kept that integrity of my core body and i just hinged at my hips to come down so bridges can be simple like that they can just be a press up and a hinge down Right, so you could just work through that hinge of your hips while every other connection is maintained. Or we could go into a bridge through a pelvic curl and a spinal articulation. So the same cues will apply to the foundation, to our legs, and of course when we get to the top of our bridge through the center and upper body. The only difference is now we're going to allow for this articulation in and out of bridge. So we're going to start with tucking the pelvis 
and then continue to roll up, roll up, peeling one vertebra at a time up off of the floor till you come into that shoulder stand bridge. And you imprint the feet, you pull the heels, you magnetize the inner thighs, zip up the pubic bone as you reach the tailbone, draw the ribs in and down, establishing that beautiful corset and then allowing the shoulders back and down. Inhale here to prepare, and exhale, rolling down, massaging through the spine. Let's do that one more time. Exhale, tuck the pelvis and start to roll up. The feet imprint, heels pull, inner thighs magnetize, so on and so forth up the chain. Now, right now, there's a lot of cues going on, but eventually it becomes one sensation. So you won't have to think of it as it always is gonna be a lot of cues. Start to identify now in this moment, sort of take a mental picture of all the things that you're feeling and then just label that bridge. And so from here on out, you know that there's a heel pull, an imprint, an inner thigh magnet, and all the connections through the core and the upper body. And this is our bridge. So go ahead and just take your next exhale to roll down and settle. Just see how that feels. See the benefits of this simple bridge exercise. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit of hamstring activation, glute activation, the entire back of the body really gets a lot of attention during that exercise. You also get the bonus of stretching out through the front of your hips and your quads. So when you do a bridge well, it really addresses a lot of things and it can really help hip health, back health, and the connection of the lower body to the upper body. Now, some of the tendencies that we'll see here, we already talked about the fact that the ribs can flare and the back can arch. Yeah, but what we'll also start to see are the feet maybe rolling out and the knees flying open or the feet turning out. Now, there's a time and a place where sometimes we do our bridge from turnout. Generally speaking, parallel is going to be where we can really get the balance of the work and supporting the body in a very balanced way. So we want to make sure, that's why we have the foot imprint. We want to make sure we really imprint all four points of our foot, that we're imprinting the ball of the big toe and pinky toe, and the inner and outer heel. Oftentimes we're rolling onto the outer edge and the inner edge of the foot is disengaging from the floor, which is what causes the knees to splay. This is also why sometimes when you're doing bridge, you may experience knee pain or knee strain. So we want to make sure that we've got that imprint, four points, and we're not compromising the leg alignment. Now, one other thing I want to make sure that we know about bridges is that sometimes there's going to be a little bit of discomfort on, in the learning curve. So say you get up to the top of the bridge and it feels really grippy and tight around the sacrum and the low back, even though you know you've got all your beautiful cues happening. You may just need to lower it down a little bit. Don't feel like your bridge has to go very, very high. You could always take a lower variation of bridge and still get a lot of benefit. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind is that make sure you're not just forcing a bridge that's then going to cause you strain or cause an injury, right? So find that height of bridge that makes sense. Keep refining your alignments. And then also if you're feeling discomfort in your knees and you know everything's going well, sometimes there's just that learning curve of being able to reset the fascia or be able to reset how the joints have been. If there's been a little bit of a torque or a misalignment or a tightness in the tissues, it's not going to change instantly. There's sort of an unraveling process that needs to happen. So sometimes there's going to be the discomfort that's towards good. 
I know it's hard to feel sometimes, but that's why we move slowly. It gives us the opportunity to really check in. And then you can find out, is this discomfort because it's actually a discomfort and maybe something's out of whack and I'm not engaging something properly? Or is it a discomfort that perhaps you are doing something really well and it's not used to it, so it's just trying to find its way? So these are just some of the basics around the bridge. And then from there, the possibilities are endless. We can add on to the bridge. We can make it more advanced by taking one leg up into tabletop. We can add props. So once your bridge is established, then you're going to feel strong and confident to be able to go into more challenging variations or just be able to know how to advance down even because taking a step back is also a very, very smart way of progressing through your sequences. And sometimes it's actually harder or more revealing than what's seen as advancing up. Enjoy your bridges.